Hello and welcome to, well, something completely different. Yes, this isn't Dragon Age as you can see. Today I would like to play something else. Uh, but um, this may require a little bit of an explanation first. So a while ago when I started my Dragon Age Let's Play, I said that I wouldn't have the time to add a second series to the channel and I mean that basically still holds true. Uh, if I would start a second large story based game, um, I would have to add a content uploads uh, for a long period of time, like weeks or months, and I definitely do not have the time to do that with two games. However, I have a little bit of time to play shorter series. So maybe I will do, you know, one off videos of casual games or just first looks at games or just games that can be finished within a few episodes. And I would also like to play some older games, games that I used to play when I was a kid. And as you can probably see today, I would like to start with such a game. Uh, the game in question is The Last Express. And I can tell you that this is probably one of my f most favorite games of all time. Uh, it has an extremely compelling story and by the time it was released it was in many aspects quite unique and, well, I would even say revolutionary. So it's said that apparently this game has been sort of forgotten. I mean, I'm sure it has uh, a large uh, fan following of, you know, people that used to play it back then. But I don't really see it being mentioned that much... Uh, otherwise. So I thought let's go and play this old gem of an adventure game. Um, this will probably take a few episodes to finish. It has a storyline that has to be finished and played through to the end. Uh, but this will in no way affect my Dragon Age Let's Play. This is just, you know, extra bonus uh, content. The Dragon Age will still upload daily at the normal time and when I continue playing you know other random games Dragon Age will always have priority so don't don't worry about that and yeah before I start this game let me just quickly mention a few things about what kind of game this is going to be like I said it is basically an adventure game um, sort of point and click it has a linear story um, but nevertheless, it has a very compelling and interesting story and it has sort of a real-time mechanic, which means I think one hour in the game is maybe around 10 minutes in real time and the time is constantly progressing throughout the game. And there are, you know, certain events taking place at certain points in time and those events will happen whether you are there to witness them or not, which gives the game a very immersive feel and also gives it a good amount of replay value despite the linear story, because on a second playthrough you may actually find some scenes that you haven't found before because you simply weren't at the right time uh, during the first playthrough. Um, <clears throat> and I can tell you I did play this game several times uh, back then. But I think the last time I played this was, I don't know, 10 years ago. So while this is not a blind let's play, um, I am still very excited to re-experience uh, this game after such a long time. Um, I still know how to solve the most difficult <laughs> uh, puzzles and problems in this game because back then it actually was quite an effort to solve these uh, problems. Imagine a time when there was no internet access uh, <laughs> available where you could just, you know, go to Google and um, look up the solution if you got stuck at some point. So in the end, uh, there was a lot of trial and error involved in this game. And sometimes I would need hours to, you know, get past a certain point in the game. So um, this this is not going to happen in, in this playthrough. I will, you know, streamline the episodes a little bit. The game does have a bit of idle time, 
which I will cut out from the finished episode and basically leaving just the pure story um, for us to experience here. So I think I should be able to finish this game in, in a few hours. Um, another thing that I think I would like to mention, uh, the graphics of the game may seem a little bit clunky to somebody um, who is used to more modern games. Uh, but I can assure you at the time when it was released, and I think it was released in 1997, so it's almost 20 years old, uh, the graphics were actually quite revolutionary. Uh, personally, I played this game a few years after it was released, because I, I was a bit too young to play it uh, when it first came out. Um, but still, I still think that the graphics are quite intriguing and stunning. Um, they have a sort of cell-shaded look, but they were actually um, recorded by real actors in a studio and then converted to have this hand-drawn look, which is, which is indeed quite interesting. Uh, sadly, presumably due to the technical limitations of the time, it apparently wasn't possible to animate all the cutscenes uh, fluidly so most of the cutscenes look more like a slideshow. Uh, but I think once you get used to that, it's it's not so bad. And there are some, you know, sequences that are, you know, fully animated and give you an idea how the game could have looked like if they had the possibility to animate it all uh, completely. Um, <clears throat> also, uh, I'm currently playing the Gold Edition of this game, which I bought from Steam. I also have the original Standard Edition, which I bought from GOG.com. I decided to play the Gold Edition for this Let's Play because it works better with my recording software and just runs a little bit smoother. Um, back then I played the Standard Edition. The differences seem to be mainly the uh, the interface and the Gold Edition apparently has some sort of hint and help system that wasn't available in, in the original version. But other than that, I hope there's not going to be huge differences uh, story-wise. I only played a few minutes to make sure everything was working correctly. And yeah, so let's let's start this game and, and have fun. And I hope that you're going to enjoy this a little bonus series, even though I know that obviously most of you uh, are here for the Dragon Age content. Um, I hope I hope that you can find some enjoyment in this. Um, it is a historical setting. It plays at the eve of World War II and takes place entirely in the Orient Express, hence the title The Last Express. And there will be some, you know, historical and um, political involvements, but uh, I will I will get into more detail about that later as the game progresses. So, yeah, let's just, you know, jump into it and watch the initial uh, cutscene, such as it is.
And yeah, here we are in the game. And yeah, there's a sort of summary of what <laughs> of what we're doing right now. Uh, this is actually part of the Gold Edition. This wasn't part of the original game. The original game just dropped you off on the train with no indication or explanation of what you're supposed to do now. But you know, since it's here, let's quickly read it. Uh, you are Robert Cass. You've just boarded the Orient Express in answer to an urgent summons from your old friend Tyler Whitney. Now you need to find him. All right, so let's. Uh, start this um yeah i need to go back into the game and now we can you know just basically look around there is some hint system part of the gold edition again this was not part of the original game there was no uh way of knowing what you were supposed to do <laughs> so um i'm not going to really use the hint system because i, I want to recreate the the original uh, experience of playing this game and I have an inventory. My inventory is pretty small because this is actually a realistic inventory. You only collect stuff that can realistically fit into a man's pockets. Um, I think there are one or two items in the game that are too big for your pockets, so you have to carry them around in your hand. And while you're carrying them you can't uh, use any other objects because your hands are full. So pretty realistic. Uh, the gold edition of the game even has a map of the train. Again, not part of the original version. You had to figure that out on your own, basically. Um, but let's have a look at the other items in our inventory, for example. We have this letter, or well, telegram, addressed to us. Let's open it. Care. I have come across something exceptional. More your line than mine. Depart Orient Express, 7 p.m. Friday, God or less. You're the only one I can trust. Your pal, Tyler. P.S. Hope you're not still angry about what happened in Cuba. So apparently this is a telegram that summoned us here. And yes, as you may have noticed, the game is voiced. It's fully voiced, which was not the standard at the point in time when this was released. Um, the voice acting may seem a little bit awkward at times by modern standards, but it was actually pretty decent for, for its time. Especially the fact that they, you know, um, hired a lot of native speakers of different languages. So you have Russian guys speaking Russian and German guys speaking German and the French guys speaking French and so on. Which really adds to, you know, the realism of this game. So alright, we need to find our friend Tyler Whitney. Uh, let's have a look at, at the other item here as well. It's basically a piece of newspaper um, about a killing of a policeman in Ireland. And, you know, the description of the suspect is actually a lot like uh, the description of, you know, the character that we're playing. So apparently we are wanted for murder in Ireland for one reason or another. So with this knowledge, um, we can now start to explore this place. Uh, let's have a look around, and yeah, we see the first, you know, people moving around. And yeah, maybe we can talk to the conductor over here. Yes, we can. Excuse me, monsieur. Excuse me. Can you tell me which compartment is Tyler Whitney's? Oh, monsieur Whitney, excuse me. Your compartment is number one. So apparently the guy thinks that we are Tyler Whitney for some reason, but um, apparently we saw no reason to uh, correct him on that. Uh, so this is compartment number four. We need to find number one. So let's uh, go there. Here it is. Let's knock. No reply. So let's have a look inside. Tyler. And yeah, that's quite a way to start the game. So you come here on board the Orient Express to meet your friend and he's dead. Um, and yeah, you you can hear the conductors, you know, walking down and up the corridors at certain points in time. But uh, we have more urgent uh, business to deal with now. So, as we know, we are already wanted for murder. So maybe it's not such a good idea to have a dead body lying around in our compartment. Um, so we need to get rid of this body and. What better way to get rid of a body than by throwing it out of the window? <laughs> so let's open the window. 
Let's pick up his dead body. Also, you know, take note of <coughs> the strange wounds on his face that almost look like um, they've been made by a claw. And now <laughs> we're going to throw him out of the window. <laughs> now, this may seem kind of, you know, obvious in hindsight, but I can tell you when I played this for the first time, the sheer audacity of just dumping your friend's body like that uh, seemed so absurd to me at that time that it took me a while to figure this out. Um, so now we uh, got rid of the body, but we have lots of blood on our jacket uh, from picking him up. So let's uh, get rid of the bloody jacket as well. Instead we're going to take his jacket. And yeah. <laughs> and yeah, let's close the window again. Basically, we have our work cut out for us now. We will now assume Tyler Witness role and try to find out who killed him and why because you know we can you safely assume that the murderer is still on board uh, the train. So first thing, maybe let's look around uh, the compartment a little bit. There aren't that many objects that you can interact with, but if you can interact with an object, uh, you can assume that it has some sort of significance. Not all objects have, but most of them. So for example, let's have a look at the box. Yeah, something, something was in here, but it is no longer. So let's close it for now. Also, there is something below the seat. Let's have a look at this as well. So let's have a look at what we just picked up. Apparently some sort of scarf. It has a W. Now Tyler's last name was Whitney, but it does kind of look like a women's scarf, doesn't it? Now, um, there is some commotion on the corridor, so maybe let's have a look at that, what's to see what's going on here. We see the conductors talking, and we hear somebody whistling. So maybe we can have a look and see uh, who's doing that. And, yeah, there's a kid here, let's speak to him. And... Yeah, he has some strange gold whistle in his hand. Which, uh, you know, will play some important role later in the game. At the moment, we can't really do anything about that because the boy won't give us a whistle. But, you know, if we go back to our compartment... Yeah, there's still blood on the floor. For some reason, by the way, nobody ever seems to notice the blood on the floor. So, <laughs> we can just ignore that. Now, if you look at the box again, the whistle may fit inside this little hole. So maybe the whistle once belonged to Tyler Whitney. But the other hint that we have is, you know, the scarf that we picked up. Probably the scarf uh, of a woman. But at the moment, we can't really say anything else. There's also Tyler Whitney's suitcase. Let's have a look at this as well. Excusez-moi, monsieur. C'est le conducteur. Um. Yes. Excuse me, Monsieur Whitney. Herr Schmidt is waiting for you in the restaurant car. Shall I bring him a message? I'll be right there. Very good, Monsieur. All right. So this uh, is, you know, one of the uh, events that you know happen at a certain point in time. But before we go and meet Mr. Schmidt in the restaurant car, I I want to have another look at the suitcase. So let's do this now. Um, there is another telegram. I accept. You need to get out of town for a while anyway. Book double compartment in your own name. Don't mention mine. Maybe a little late. I'll meet you on the train. Cat. P.S. Still angry about Cuba. So apparently this is our reply to his telegram. And then we have this scroll. Let's have a look at it. Um, it is apparently a Russian uh, manuscript. Uh, there isn't really much we can do with it at the moment since we do not speak Russian, but like I said, 
most of the items that you will find have some sort of significance. And we now have the scroll in our inventory. Um, but since apparently a Mr. Schmidt is waiting for us in the restaurant car, maybe we should go and pay him a visit. Uh, the restaurant car is this way. I mean, you Bonsoir, can monsieur. have a look at the map if you want to, but at some point you will just figure it out on your own as well. There are some ladies here. There's a very, very limited number of passengers on this train, so... <laughs> so, yeah, apparently the little boy uh, noticed uh, how we throw out Tyler of the um, window. Luckily, nobody seems to believe him, so <laughs> we'll be fine for the time being. Uh, let's find our mysterious Mr. Schmidt. So this is a restaurant car. Bonsoir, Monsieur. We have a nice table for you here in the corner. If you will well, please uh, follow me. Thank you a lot. Please, let's monsieur. follow him and have sit down. And we can look around a little bit. There are some guys sitting over here. We have uh, these two fellows, and like I said, there is a very limited number of passengers on this train, and at some point you will uh, get to know them all, like these two guys, for example. But um, this apparently is uh, the guy we are supposed to talk to. Ah, so Whitney, this. you are different than I had imagined. Sorry to keep you waiting, I ran across an old friend. One does have the most unexpected encounters on trains. Shall we get down to business? Have you brought the gold? <laughs> First you kept me waiting, now you don't answer me. I have kept my half of the bargain. If something has gone wrong, I would like to know it. Nothing has gone wrong. I'm glad. I trust that you will not mind if I ask to see the gold. I trust you won't mind either if I ask to see what I'm buying. To see it? But you know that is impossible. The merchandise will be put on the train at Munich. It is what we agreed. Good. <laughs> then we're even. Herr Schmidt, it's been a pleasure. We'll talk again after Munich. So, yeah, that guy just has the funniest German accent that I've ever heard. But we've learned a little bit of information here. Apparently, Tyler wanted to buy something from him, him uh, and pay him in gold. However, we didn't find any gold in his uh, compartment. So, um, yeah, this is a bit of a problem. And let's have another look around. We can't currently talk to these two people. So let's just leave the place again and see if we find other people to talk to. Um, yeah, th there's a newspaper here that you can read, but this is basically just, you know, background information. We don't really need that at the moment. Oui, madame. Avez-vous fait votre choix? Yes, I'll have the beef filet. Le filet de bœuf jardinière. Very good. Is madame dining alone? Yes. Very good, madame. So, it's a few minutes later now, and now we have this mysterious lady in red sitting in the restaurant car, so maybe, maybe we can talk to her. Mind if I join you? That's bold. Is it customary in America to be so forward? In certain circles, it's not unheard of. I must have been moving in the wrong circles. I hope you find somewhere to sit. So, yeah, this lady Bonsoir, just rejected Monsieur. us quite Does nicely. However, yes. maybe we can show her the scarf, because, I mean, uh, the bio unlocked Monsieur. sign at the bottom already told us that her name is Anna Wolf, so maybe this is her scarf. Let's, let's show her the scarf. Um, let, me, let me do it like that. Excuse me, I think you dropped this. It's not mine. My mistake. I wonder whose it is. <laughs> so, it's not her scarf. I just hope to believe that. Maybe, maybe let's try to show it to her again. Are you sure this isn't your scarf? Quite sure. So, yeah, she, she just denies that it is her scarf. But we have some suspicions already that maybe, maybe she has been in Tyler Whitney's apartment and 
dropped her scarf there. Pardon and me? You know, while the conductor is away, maybe we can have a look at his book over here. And, oh yeah, this, this is very, very useful, because right this away, um, is the passenger list. Now let's have a look at the passenger list. So these are all the passengers on board the train. Uh, a nice part of uh, the passenger list is that if you click on the name of a person that you have already interacted with, it gives you a small, uh, you know, snippet. For example... This is, you know, the young girl and the old man we met in the... Um, in, in the uh, restaurant car. And we also find August Schmidt's name in, on here. The merchandise will be put on the train at Munich. <laughs> it is what we agreed. Good. We'll talk again after Munich. And we have Tyler Whitney, of course. Please come. You're the only one I can trust. So, that is actually quite interesting. So you can, you know, see all the people that are uh, on the train. Anyway, let's, let's leave this place for now. We just keep the passenger list. <laughs> And since the second service is now served in the restaurant car, we may actually go back there and see if we can meet some new people. Vasily Alexandrovich. Dedushka. Vasily Alexandrovich, меня зовут Алексей Дольников. Вы, кажется, знавали моего батюшку. Да. Знавал я одного Дольникова, Петра Николаевича. Хороший был человек, набожный. Сын у него был. Опозорил и отца, и всю семью свою. Пойдем, внученька. Устал я малость. Василий Александрович, how many thousands have you condemned to prison and torture in the name of your piety? Или вы счет потеряли? Now, that is actually pretty interesting. I don't remember ever seeing that scene before. So, yeah, this is just another matter of being at the right uh, spot at the right time. So I actually managed to, you know, witness this little confrontation between uh, our Russian passengers. And, yeah, this, <laughs> this is um, the Persian guy. Uh, Mahmoud Makta, and as you can see, this guy actually has not one hey, compartment, but five of them. And uh, the reason yes, for that I am is sorry, that... Have a pleasant night, monsieur. Ah, monsieur Whitney, excusez-moi. His Excellency wishes to receive you in his private car. Mm, his Excellency? Yes, monsieur. He's waiting for you. Alright, so apparently we just uh, received an invitation to... Uh, the private car at the back of the train, um, which is this one. Uh, but as I was just about to mention about um, our um, Mr. Makta, <laughs> who apparently has not only one compartment but five of them, uh, the reason for that is that he is traveling with several wives. I assume four of them, one for each compartment. But yeah, let's let's go to the back of the train and visit the mysterious Excellency, who summoned us into his private car. And here we are, Kronos private car, let's knock. Hello, it seems I've been sent for by someone named His Excellency. That wouldn't be you, would it? Yeah, let's wait for Mr. Connors to arrive here. We can look around a little bit, but uh, what there he is. Unexpected pleasure, Mr. Robert Cannon. Usually people call me Tyler Whitney. You should take care when choosing a name for yourself. Names have power. The most primitive cultures understood this. But of course, it will be as you prefer. Not everyone has the luxury of choosing his own name, Mr. Kronos. Whether you are Kath or Whitney is a matter of indifference to me. 
I am prepared to continue the discussions begun by my agent in Paris, provided that you have the piece of which you spoke. Is Kronos your first name or your last name? I have no time to <laughs> continue these delightful discussions of names. I have brought with me a rather heavy briefcase. I would like to know now if the proposed exchange interests you and if you are capable of completing it. Not just at the moment, but I have hopes of being able to do so. In that case, we have nothing further to discuss. I myself must leave the train in Vienna. In case we do not see each other again, I wish you a pleasant journey to Istanbul and continued success in evading the British and French authorities. <laughs> have a pleasant evening, Mr. Ka. Kahina will show you out. So, apparently this guy knows that we are not who we pretend to be. And apparently, um, he has arranged for some sort of deal with Tyler Whitney. He wants some item in exchange for a quote-unquote very heavy briefcase, presumably gold. And we also know that the other guy, the German bloke, wants some gold from us in exchange for an unspecified merchandise. So, we're finally finding out some pieces of the puzzle here. But it's still very unclear what's Merci going on at the moment. Le train entre en gare d'Epernay. Epernay, cinq minutes d'arrêt. So now something is happening. We arrived at a station, but this is, I believe, not a normal stop uh, on this route. And I'm afraid, as we are about to find out. Somebody must have found the dead body that we dumped uh, out of, you know, the window. And they will now come on board the train to search for the culprit. So, um, it's better that we are not uh, nearby when this happens. One option is to simply hide in some other compartment. Excusez -moi, monsieur. Excusez -moi, monsieur. Um, let's, let's try to... Enter here. Excuse me, monsieur. That is Count Balansky's compartment. Yours is in the next sleeping car. <laughs> yeah, the problem is um, that the uh, conductor will stop you from entering somebody else's compartment unless he is somehow distracted. As you probably saw, somebody else uh, entered the corridor and so I could, you know, slip inside here uh, unnoticed. Uh, this is also something that is very intriguing when you play this game for the first time, especially back then, 20 years ago, because it was the first time that I played a game that had this sort of, you know, situational awareness that actually, you know, took into account if people are looking in your direction or if they're looking another way. It's somewhat common in, you know, stealth games this uh, in these times, but at that point in time, this was really really interesting so yeah I managed to slip into the apartment of um, Count Obolinsky this is the Russian guy we met in the restaurant car he is sleeping right now and now we're just going to hide in his bathroom uh, there are several places in the train where you can hide from uh, the policeman which will board the train uh, this is in my opinion the easiest one you just you know need to find a proper time to slip inside without the conductor noticing and now we will just sit here and wait until the policemen are gone bonsoir police ouvrez s'il vous plaît just a minute so we now hear the policemen knocking on every door and checking all the passengers merci madame bonne soirée excusez nous de vous avoir dérangé and then on the left at the compartment of bonsoir, Tatiana police. And this is now the apartment of uh, the Count Apolinsky, who is not opening because he is asleep. So the policemen are now leaving the train again and we dodged this bullet because as you can imagine if the policemen would have caught us it would have been game over again 
and we would have to go back some uh, I don't know 10 15 minutes to a point in time and then you know try to try to evade the policeman but you know while we're here in the compartment of uh, Count Obolinsky, um we can see that there's a small hidden closet here currently there's nothing inside but again most objects have some sort of uh, significance so let's try to remember that uh, and now we're going to leave this place there isn't really anything in here that we can look at um, he has some you know icon hanging on the wall but other than that it's just this guy sleeping so let's leave this place again Excuse me. Rien, madame. Il s'agissait d'une erreur. Il n'y a aucune raison de s'inquiéter. And again, you can hear the boy talking about that body he saw uh, <laughs> being thrown out of the window. But again, nobody believes him. So uh, we saw a few people going up and down the corridors again, so maybe let's have another look around and see who we can find. For example, uh, Madame Wolf is here again. Are you reading about Madame Caillot? I don't believe we've been introduced. We haven't. I'm Tyler Whitney. I know. Herr Schmidt told me who you were. If you'll excuse me, I'd like to finish my magazine. You still haven't told me your name. <laughs> and apparently she doesn't want to but again we already know that it's uh, um, Anna Wolf because of that uh, <laughs> bio pop up in, 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 the, in the first scene that we met her again that is actually part of the gold edition it's not part of, of the original game um, but yeah she apparently doesn't really want to have anything to do with us so we are just going to ignore her for now after a month on the island, you won't think about such things. Uh, yeah, we have um, those two ladies. It's a French lady and uh, a British lady. Uh, they have some interesting conversation at times, but they're not really uh, important for the ma main story. Do you know? When I saw you in London, I thought you were English. Not really. <laughs> yes, really. <laughs> My wife is English. Perhaps because of this. It's more than that. It's the way you dress, the way you carry yourself. And of course, you speak English so beautifully. <laughs> I would never have believed you were German. Is that so? <laughs> but really, Miss Wolf, your wood English is also very good. It's, it's kind of funny that they speak English to each other because, I mean, he's German and she's Austrian, so they could technically speak in German, but for some reason they, they actually speak in English here. But yeah, there isn't really that much going on. You can witness some conversations here and there, but um, apparently there's nothing really important at the moment. So maybe we just, you know, want to return to our own compartment. And yeah, currently we can't do anything in the corridors either, as long as the conductor is <laughs> watching, we can't enter any other compartments, and most of them are locked anyway. However, this is uh, an interesting uh, piece of information. Somebody has a dog, a very dangerous sounding dog. So apparently the dog is in compartment number F. Excuse me. So, um, Let's have a look at the passenger list. Who actually oui, madame. lives in apartment number F? Ce n'est pas directement dans le compartiment voisin, madame, mais vous avez raison. Le chien appartient à madame Wolf. Je dois avouer que je suis très surprise que la compagnie ignore ses propres règles. Bien sûr, vous avez raison, madame, mais vous savez, madame Wolf voyage toujours avec son chien. Le problème n'est pas le bruit, mais l'hygiène. Dans une voiture de première, c'est vraiment inadmissible. Je comprends ce que vous voulez dire, madame. Et dans un train de première classe ordinaire, bien sûr, cela ne se produirait pas. Mais vous savez, madame, l'Orient Express a une histoire bien spéciale. 
Tout le monde sait que Madame Wool <rire> voyage toujours avec son énorme chien. Cela fait partie du romantisme légendaire de l'Orient Express. Certains de nos passagers sont parfois extrêmement déçus de ne pas avoir la chance de voyager en sa compagnie. Hmm. J'espère qu'il est attaché au moins. Oh bien sûr madame, il est très bien dressé. Le meilleur chien que vous ne puissiez rencontrer. Je vous assure que vous vous rendrez à peine compte qu'il y a un chien dans le train. Bon, on verra ça. Y a-t-il autre chose madame So, yeah, apparently this kind of uh, ninja us a little bit here. But yeah, we now know that the dog belongs to um, Madame Wolf, which is interesting because if you remember, uh, on Tyler Whitney's face we saw some uh, wounds that kind of looked like claws, and yeah, Madame Wolf has a dog, so that that is an interesting thing to know. Anyway, let's uh, go back into our compartment. Who are you? This is my compartment, who are you? This is Tyler Whitney's compartment. Where is Tyler? <laughs> who beats her? And yeah, now we have to fight this guy. <coughs> so yeah, this is basically <sighs> just a matter of the right timing. You have to get out of the way whenever he you know, swings at you. Um, this can be a bit difficult at times. It is a bit clunky, and yeah, if you if you miss your your timing, something like this happens. Basically, you're dead, and you have to start over again. So this may take a few times until you get it right. You really have to anticipate his movement, so it's it's not it's not that easy. Anyway, we managed we managed to uh, overwhelm him. As I was about to say, I didn't kill him. Who are you? My name is Robert Kath. So you are Kath. Tyler spoke of you. He was afraid you were angry with him. He shouldn't have worried. That was a long time ago. You better tell me what's going on. Tyler had a meeting with someone named August Schmidt. What was that about? Where's the gold? What gold? I saw a wooden box in a hell of a mess. Then we are lost. How can I tell this to the general? Oh, I must tell to the others. What general? What were you and Tyler mixed up in? You must tell no one about this. No one. Not even the train conductor? <laughs> You've been warned. Senaruka, the Black Hand. So, well, this didn't really answer anything. We just know that apparently uh, these were some acquaintances of Tyler Whitney. And he in some way was involved with him. Um, however, if you have a little bit of historical knowledge and you heard the name the Black Hand, then you may know that the Black Hand had, you know, um, a part in in the events that eventually triggered the outbreak of World War One. And at some point uh, the Austrian heir to the throne will be assassinated uh, by this group, so um, there is there's something going on here, and apparently our friend Tyler Whitney was involved in this. Anyway, we haven't really found out what's going on here, so let's just go to sleep and see if we can uh, learn more about what's happening tomorrow. Okay, let's get up and kind of strange, very, very silent all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, let's leave our compartment and hmm, everything is empty and yeah, and we can't really move. As you can see, we're not getting much closer to the end of the car. Something is very, very wrong. <laughs> so let's just head back again. Um, and again, something is not right here. <laughs> so we just, you know, have to wildly uh, click around and we're still at compartment number one. Very strange. Uh, let's go inside. Why don't you make it sing? <laughs> <laughs> 
So yeah, it was just a dream, uh, as the uh, Steam achievement already told you. Yeah, apparently they added some achievements in the Steam version, which is a bit uh, odd, I think. I don't think it, it would be necessary to, to add those achievements. But yeah, I think um, this is a good moment to end the first episode of this game. Uh, we have found out a few things already about Tyler Whitney and some of the people he was involved with, but we still have, you know, to find out more about what's going on here. It had something to do with the Serbian guy we just met and with the German bloke who is supposed to sell us something and with the mysterious Mr. Kronos who was supposed to buy something from us. Anyway, I hope I hope you enjoyed this, you know, uh, excursion into a little bit of a different uh, type of game. And I will be uploading episodes somewhat regularly, um, not every day like Dragon Age, maybe every other day, until I have finished this game. And once I finish this game, um, I will think about what other games I can play. Like I said, the series itself will be sort of irregular, but once I've started a game, I I will try my best to finish it uh, somewhat quickly and not delay episodes for too long. But yeah, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you uh, will be interested in watching more of this. So if you, if you do, uh, leave a like and <laughs> wait for the next episode, which will probably um, be, be uploaded in uh, about two days. So yeah, thanks for watching and see you again next time.